Hi, my name is Yi Kun from University of Minnesota, and our work is on fragmentation-free land allocation using a spatial optimization approach. So I'm working with Dr. Shashi Shikar, and we also have domain collaborators in agronomy, um, Brent Dalzell and David Muller. So this work is motivated by uh, the dilemma between food production and the need for clean water. So now there is a huge demand on food production and that has created some problems in water quality. So the well-known example is the dead zone in Gulf of Mexico. And Minnesota now also has a new state law saying that um, on av in agricultural watershed, on average, uh, there has to be a 50 feet wide buffer strips, uh, veget vegetative buffer strips along the water bodies in order to filter out all the sediments and protect the water quality. Uh, so since in uh, agricultural watershed there exist many different choices of land uses or management practices. So here we are trying to um, solve this dilemma using land allocation optimization to find a better balance between food production and the need for clean water. So in related work, um, traditionally land allocation can be done by stakeholder collaboration, like um, we show in these pictures. Um, there are many st stakeholders, human experts, they work together using their domain knowledge to create the design. And these uh, manually designed solutions are shown on the left um, by collaborative, collaborative geo design. So the objective here is to improve water quality through the design. And here we can see uh, since this is a complicated optimization problem, the human designs are still conservative and they cannot significantly improve the water quality. So on the other hand, we tried uh, conventional integer programming. So it's an optimization approach. So we tried it uh, without any spatial constraints. So here what you can see is the algorithm can indeed maximize the water quality under different budget constraints. But the problem is there exists a large amount of spatial fragmentation. So basically the fragmentation is uh, small patches or small tiny patches of land uses, land covers, or land management practices. So these uh, small fragmentations are not very practical for uh, large modern large farm equipment. And it prohibits efficient use of those um, equipment. Uh, for example, on the right uh, in the picture, it's a 40 feet wide combine harvester, which is uh, popularly used in Midwest during harvest. So those uh, large machines can hardly be used if we have so much fragmentation in the result. So here, what we did is we add some spatial constraints. For example, we say each of the land use patch must satisfy a minimum area so that it's uh, practical for those operations. So this is the problem. So we are given an agricultural watershed. And for each of the location within the watershed, we have multiple choices, either for land use, land cover, or land management practices. So e at each location, each choice will have a profit value and cost value. So here, the profit could be water quality improvement uh, or other different objectives. And the cost could be decrease in food, pr food production or the economic investment that we can make. So the goal here is to find a land allocation map which can maximize the overall water quality improvement in the watershed. Or similarly, we can have uh, the other objectives. So he, and the first constraint we have is the total cost is less than or equal to the budget limit, which could be the food production. And we guarantee each patch satisfies a minimum area so that it's uh, contiguous or it's large enough for farm equipment operation. And the shape also needs to be regular. Uh, it's also for uh, practicality concern. So here, uh, we did a case study in Midwestern uh, in Seven Mile Creek watershed in Minnesota. So here I'm showing the solution using conventional integer programming without any spatial constraints. And in the zoom in window on the right, you can see if we don't add the spatial constraints, there are a large amount of fragmentation here in the result. Uh, all those very tiny, small patches. And this map uh, shows the solutions, different solutions of fragmentation-free land allocation. And here we are imposing different spatial constraints. Um, from map to map, we increase the minimum area constraint for each patch. Uh, so here uh, you can see we can achieve the desired level of spatial contiguity during the optimization, optimization process by adding those constraints. So it's practical for farm equipment operation. Uh, so the, th this problem is computationally very challenging and it's actually, in computer science, it's an uh, NP-hard problem, which is among the hardest problems in computer science. And we have a large number of decision variables in real-world watershed with large number of constraints in order to remove the fragmentation. 
and we have proposed a couple approaches to solve the problem. Uh, the first one is uh, published at uh, Triple AI conference on artificial intelligence uh, using a bottom-up approach. And the second one, we, where we start with a fragmented solution and we hierarch hierarchically remove the fragmentation in the op optimal result. And this, is, uh, this work is under review. And now I'm working on some approximation and exact algorithms where we can guarantee, have, have more guarantee on the solution quality. Um, thanks. We're still looking for more collabor co collaborations. So if you are interested in land allocation or optimization machine learning in agriculture, we will be happy to collaborate. Thanks. Yes. Sure, yeah. So, so it, it strikes me, you, you're requiring a minimum, a different minimum at each one that's fixed. That's right. Yeah. I wonder if you've looked at some sort of dynamic minimum. That, dynamic minimum. Right, that, that allows you to, I mean, I'm looking at the, the largest one on the lower right-hand side versus up. You know, there, there are some regions that are really bad, oh, and maybe you okay. allow smaller uh, see, regions yeah, yeah, in some that, areas and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's something we can do, yeah. That's an interesting idea, thanks. I guess Melissa is letting me invoke moderator's privilege. Um, so uh, th there's kind of a large body of work in evolutionary algorithms doing multi-objective right. optimization. Have, right. you, have you looked into any, any of those approaches for, for this? Um, yeah, look into some of the approaches. And many people, they add the spatial constraints as a penalty function in the objective function. And then they use genetic algorithms to solve it. So the problem with that is we can still not guarantee that in the study area, we don't have fragmentation. And in some places, the fragmentation is removed. But in the other places, there's still a large amount of fragmentation. Mm -hmm. And since this problem is very, so the constraint um, is not independent from patch to patch. And if you change one of the patches, it's going to influ influence the nearby patches. So it's still very difficult, very challenging for genetic algorithm to solve it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other issue is genetic algorithm is still a heuristic algorithm. So it cannot have any guarantee on solution quality. We just have a number of iterations. And after the iterations, it gives us a solution. Mm -hmm. So here, what we want to do is we use some approximation and exact algorithms. So we can guarantee the solution is optimal, or we can guarantee we can, we can have some lower bound on the solution quality. So that's what we want to do in this algorithm. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.